So that's the intro to Jethro Tull's Life's a Long Song, a great little solo piece by Ian Anderson. Uh, it was recorded in May 1971, slightly after the uh, sessions for Aqualung wrapped up. So it was just after that time period. Uh, it's a song I've been meaning to uh, get around to doing a tutorial for. Uh, it's kind of tricky, actually. I'm a little rusty, so I took the week off uh, last week. I was backpacking in uh, Wyoming in the Wind River Range, which if you don't know where that is, it's a remote mountain range in the western part of the state. It's still one of the more remote places uh, that you can go because there are no roads uh, crossing and really no roads penetrating the mountain range. So the only way to get in there is to walk. And uh, we backpacked about 25 miles, climbed about 4,000 vertical feet, maybe a few more. Uh, it was a exhilarating uh, week in the wilderness and there's nothing like that to recharge my batteries. Nothing else works like that. Maybe playing guitar sometimes, but. All right, well, we're gonna dive into Life's a Long Song. Uh, just a few words about the guitar I'm playing. You can see that this is a uh, it's a Collings OM3. It has a Sitka spruce top. It has Brazilian rosewood back and sides. It really was uh, built in 1990, so it's a very early Collings. Uh, this was just when he was beginning to build uh, OM style guitars. Um, definitely my favorite guitar all around. It's just a wonderfully balanced instrument. All the notes in the register are very clear. Um, not too boomy in the bass. It really sings in the upper range and uh, just a wonderful instrument, particularly for finger style, but also for picking. All right, so let's uh, go over this. We're gonna start with the intro. Uh, the intro is probably the trickiest part <laughs> of the song. Uh, boy, the tempo that he plays it at is just amazing. He is such a good guitar player. The strumming in this is notably lacking in those slurred upstrokes that I've talked about previous videos. All that stuff like that. that's so prominent in his playing uh, is not featured in this song. I think he was just developing really that style and that technique. There were some songs like Up, Up the Pool that did have a lot of the slurred upstrokes, um, but this one doesn't, so we don't have to go over that. All right, so let's look at the very opening of the intro. Now I'm playing it just like it is on the record. Uh, so subsequent live performances, he does change the intro slightly, uh, but I'm gonna play it, show it to you just like it appeared on the, uh, was played on the album in 1971. So first off, I do have my uh, guitar capoed at the seventh fret. And I'm gonna let you tune real quick to my guitar. All right, so as uh, many, many songs are they're of uh, Ian's, they're, this one's based two out of a D-shaped chord mainly. And on the record, actually he hits, the first note he hits is an A, and then he hits the D-string. But I wonder if that was maybe a mistake, actually. Uh, when he comes around the second time in the intro, he, he starts on the D and not the A. So I kind of think maybe they said rolling and maybe he took off and he kind of accidentally did that. Who knows? Maybe he did it on purpose. 
but I'm going to show you starting on the D string because that's what he does the, when, the next time when he comes around he plays it on the D string and not the A. So this first part of the phrase goes So that's the very first part of the phrase. So let's look at that. I'm hitting the D string, downstroke, G string, upstroke, strumming the D chord, and then hitting the high E string on the way back. So that's the first thing we need to do. So practice that. And once you get that, we're going to do a hammer on on the B string. Open to there and then pull off. And then we're going to go and we're going to hit the, we're going to play the D string again. And we're going to be just fretting with one finger here, which is a C chord over D, which is a very popular chord with Ian. Da, 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 is the is the timing of the strumming. And then we're going to hammer on, uh, play the D string. We're going to add that note. doing that. So we're adding this on the D string first and then we're hammering on the G string open to that note. kind of becomes an A minor 9, I think. That'd be just a C. Adding that note. So here the, how the strumming rhythm changes a little bit. It goes. So that's the rhythm pattern. So it's important to get that rhythm, the strumming rhythm pattern down as well for this opening intro. Oops.
And then we're going to land on the D chord, strumming it on the beat. holding the D chord and playing those notes on the G string and then up to the B string and then we're going to switch to this A minor triad and we're going to come down that in an arpeggio like that. And this is hard to play at tempo. I think this is one of the hardest little parts of the whole intro is getting that transition from this chord to this chord quickly. The way you got to do that is to alternate picking Upstroke, downstroke, upstroke. See? Upstroke, downstroke, upstroke. And then we're landing on this chord again. The C with the D. And then we're going to do a pull off and just hit those strings open. And then we're going to hammer on on the G string to get back to the D chord. That's, that part trips me up. Because you got to do it really fast. <clears throat> All right, so when we get back to the uh, D chord, now we're going to go. Starting on the D string. changing to a C-shaped chord. <clears throat> now let's hear the rhythm of that. He kind of hammers on the chord because you have to transition that way because it's very fast. Da, da, da. And then we're going to immediately go to an A suspended chord. And then we're going to resolve it. And then we're going to hit the strings open to transition back to the D chord. So I'll show you how that goes. So that's how it goes. Once again. Yep, 
He kind of hammers on the D chord to get back to it. Watch this. Sort of like that. If we take it from the top, It's a little hard for me to play slow and play it in time. And then we're into where the vocal starts. When you fall, as he often does, so he's playing what he's singing there again. As you're falling awake. And then we're going to switch to that C chord with the D in the bass. As you're falling awake. We're going to do that little maneuver to get back to the D chord we did earlier, where we do a pull off and then hammer on to get back to the D. As you're falling away and you say, stuck of the new day. And you hear your voice crow as you choke on what you need to say. And then we're to an F shaped chord. Well, let's go over that again. As you're falling away and you take... I find this one a little hard to sing and play at the same time, honestly. I have trouble with that anyway, but this one somehow in particular gives me fits. As you're falling away and you take stock of the new day and you hear your voice crow as you choke on what you need to say he kind of changes the rhythm a little bit there he goes to get to the F chord well don't you fret don't you fear, I will give you good cheer. <clears throat> so let's look at that a little closer. Well, don't you fret, don't you fear. And we do a hammer on there, on the D string. Well, don't you fret, don't you fear, I will give G chord, and we're going to hammer on the A string, hammer on the D string on the C chord, on the A string, on the G, uh, G chord. Well, don't you fret, don't you fear. I will give you good cheer. Nice and long song. And then we're to the chorus. <clears throat> and on the chorus, life's a long song. It's going to be based out of this D chord and a C9 chord. So those are the two chord shapes for the chorus. Life's a long song. And we're going to hammer on the D string open 
to uh, this position. Whoop. Nice and long song. So we're hammering on the D string again while we're playing that triad. So we're just playing the upper part of that C9 chord. It's a long song. And then we're going to hammer on the A string to there. Life's a long song. Life's a long song. Life's a long song. We will meet G chord in the sweet light of dawn. And we're back to the A suspended. And we're doing the same thing. And it's into the second verse. So all the verses are the same. This song's uh, handy in that it doesn't really have a bridge. So that's all the parts of the song, right? So the difficulty with this song, once again, is that tempo is so breakneck. us to the end of another tutorial hope that uh, helps you learn that song it's a really cool song beautiful always love that song first time I heard it until next time we'll see you again